Hey, it's Tim Estrell, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. Uh, kind of no notice going live with this live stream. Had some uh, weather moving in. We have tornado watch happening around the area and thunderstorms coming through. So I didn't know if I'd be able to do my live stream later at 8 p.m. Eastern time, which I normally do it. So I thought I would hop on right now and uh, hopefully get notice out to you guys. Whoever shows up, shows up. Um, again, sorry, late notice. Had to do this because of this weather. And uh, I'm going to I have this OBS software and close this. But tonight we're going to talk about, um, if people show up, we're going to talk about the uh, FCA Renault merger. That information went live a little while ago. And uh, then, hey, Keenan. And so that information went live and said so a merger is coming. Um, looks preeminent. So I thought about, like, who is next for a merger? Hey, Dance Master. Who's next for a merger? Uh, you know, I started looking around and Ford looks like it's pretty prime for something going on. Uh, stock price has been in the toilet for a long time. They're trying to revive uh, that mar market. Excuse me. I, have to, I keep seeing my image and it's delayed on the screen, so I'm going to keep moving that down. Um, so Ford, to me, seems like it's likely to be somebody that could be a merger object. Uh, they've merged in the past. Uh, stock price has been stagnant. Uh, products, as far as vehicles, are down. Trucks are what's still selling. And so much like FCA, where Ram and Jeep are doing really well with Dodge doing pretty well as well uh ford is in the same kind of boat they could definitely see some uh, benefits as far as getting some uh a car brand like i said hyundai kia because hyundai kia does a great job on um producing cars and so you take the car brand with the truck brand of ford seems like a good good kind of fit um oh so keenan's talking about fca mitsubishi uh, Mitsubishi is going to be interesting. Yeah, sorry, Juan, Super Duty. Sorry, I'm early. We have weather moving in. Uh, big thunderstorms coming through. Thought about losing Wi-Fi. Thought about uh, th tornadoes in the area. So I'm sorry. I'm, I'm doing an impromptu live stream real fast. Uh, not real fast, but trying to do um, one impromptu. I didn't get a notice out there. So I do apologize not notifying you guys. Uh, I just looked at the forecast, and it's pretty dire outside. Um, so yeah, so well, Mitsubishi and Nissan were together. And so with FCA going to Renault... What happens to Nissan? Nissan's got to find a partner, and it's got to be a big partner. So I was thinking, well, what about General Motors? You know, what about Toyota and Mazda? Toyota and Mazda are already building a plant together. So Toyota doesn't do great with turbocharged engines. Mazda does great with turbocharged engines. So I don't know. This It's kind of interesting. There's some uh, interesting debate going on. And, um, oh, thanks, Juan. Um, Interesting discussions happening. So uh, you, the video went out this morning. I had the breaking news. If you didn't catch it, FCA has put together a proposal package to Renault. They're offering 50-50 split between Renault and uh, FCA. Build a board between both brands, and they're going to give one seat to Nissan if the deal goes through, which basically they're kicking Nissan on the curb. That's basically what's happening here. So if Nissan goes to the curb, maybe they pull out from the alliance, which means that Nissan, oh, Juan, it's not that bad. Uh, it's just... We could lose power. That's the only, that's the biggest thing. But I got lots of whiskey, so we're set. Um, but, uh, you know, if Nissan and Mitsubishi pull out of the alliance, does Mitsubishi stay with Nissan? Does Mitsubishi go off on its own? That's the question, too. Um, General Motors talked a long time about having its own uh, uh, merger because General Motors doesn't do great in Europe at all. And uh, it seems like they're prime. They could do a, a merger. Uh, you, you look at Sergio when he was alive. Sergio went to, to General Motors and tried to merge uh, Fiat Chrysler with General Motors. So, I don't know. I, I, I just thought it would be an interesting question tonight. You guys can sound off in the comments. Again, Tim Estrell, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. Go ahead and uh, put your questions there. I'll respond to your comments. Really, live streams, guys. I drink some whiskey. We talk about trucks. I answer your, answer your questions. Talk about why I can't talk right, why I don't enunciate well, uh, why I'm too fat, my uh, uh, clothing choices. <laughs> All the stuff. Uh, yeah. Mm. Okay, I didn't expect Renault and FC to merge. I did not expect it either. I haven't heard if there's a vote yet. There was supposed to be a vote today by the board of directors of uh, Renault, but uh, from my indications from the, the sources I had and the, the stories I was reading, it really was a, a no-brainer. Like, they were just going to vote yes and be done with it. So it looks like that's going to happen. Uh, anything on a Titan V6? I entered anything, Benito. I would say that's dead. I would say that's dead because it'll be a new Titan coming out next year is the time frame they're looking at. And so I will, I would see that um, if they're going to do it V6 Titan, it'll probably be next next generation. I, it's dead for this generation. 
Nissan is a Chrysler of Asian brands. <laughs> Nissan's had some problems, and so they've been going through a lot of stuff. They lost, they had a 45% drop in profit. So, wow, that's a big drop. So, um, I'm really excited about new Nissan Frontier. I think they have the right guy in charge now. Frontier could be really cool. Um, I'm excited to see about that. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be curious to see what happens with Nissan because they are tanking bad. I deal, but I don't want Nissan parts bins in my Jeep. <laughs> I don't think Nissan's going to have any say in that, that alliance. I think they're getting tossed a curb. Uh, great coverage in Thunderbow. Hey, thanks, Chris. Uh, it, it's a truck I know quite a well, and uh, I've seemed to be one of the few guys out there that really covers the truck from a journalist standpoint. Um, that covers all brands and the truck. I mean, Thunder Dew 34 does a great job about um, Thunder only, but I don't know. Uh, I, I tend to cover it with a different point of view. I think we'll see more with Ford and Volkswagen Group in the future. Ooh. Now that's a good question. That's a good one, Bryant, because you have Volkswagen builds a lot of great cars and luxury cars, and also Porsche, part of Volkswagen Group, and you have Ford builds a lot of trucks, and they do trucks really well. It'd be a similar merger to what you're seeing with uh, Renault and FCA. I think that could be definitely going more forward, and they're already working on an agreement, right? And so they're already talking about building a truck together. So it could be it could be a, a good merger in the future for them. I think that Sergio was right a couple years. He said, uh, I think Sergio was right a couple years ago. He said, try and enunciate better for my critics, is that uh, mergers need to happen. The market's going to get stalled at 17 million units in the United States. And I think it's going to be stalled for, that's the top of the line. And so rising cost with R&D, with electric cars, with Thomas driving, with meeting EPA requirements, I think you're going to find more mergers in, in industry. And so I don't think we're done yet. I think this is going to be the future for the next couple of years will be more mergers. So it's, it's kind of cool. To, it's kind of fun to think about, like in your back of your head, you know, what, what could you see? What merger could happen? How about a HD Titan to have the Cummins? Um, I like the HD t Titan. I actually um, have a video coming out this week. I should do it this week. There was a conversation about the new 20, be 2021 Nissan Titan not having, not having the Cummins. There's a rumor out there that Titan that Nissan's gonna kill the Cummins and the uh, Titan, and so I'll do a whole video on that. Yeah, I liked your video. It was funny when you called it bullshit about the V8 is dead in the tundra. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where people come up with this stuff, but uh, for a f for the source was a factory worker in San Antonio who was calling the V8 dead when those product plans haven't been released to dealer to the um, to the uh, factory at all like how the hell would he know like it's it's i don't know it, it's crazy it's it's that's just ridiculous and uh there was a lot of conversations hey brandon sorry there's a tornado not a tornado there's a severe weather coming in so i had to do my live stream quick, quickly and i was had some family matters last couple weeks um uh, what was i getting at oh uh, there's a lot of conversations about on that post about the chief engineer and i want to explain something here the chief engineer role for each brand and company is different in Toyota's case, the chief engineer is the chief guy, not just engineer. He He's on top of budgeting. He's on top of looks over marketing. He hand, looks over design. He is the source for everything. And so what he will say is he will look at he will look at the budget, look at the designs. And he talks about this stuff in the video we did in Japan. He talks about how uh, he made the design team be more edgy. He looks at budget. He takes all these stuff together. So what he does is he takes all of the stuff he wants to do and he writes puts together a budget he puts together all the stuff he wants to have happen and he goes presents the business case to the executive council what he wants to do how he wants to make it happen how he sees sales uh what the budget's going to be and then he gets it approved and so yeah i i don't think that's i his role is much bigger than people take credit for and toyota does things differently they have that executive council and so really it's on the chief engineer to make all those plans uh, let's see. I tweeted Mike Levine on Twitter and I wanted a new Ford excursion and he hearted my tweet. Yeah, I I'd imagine so. Mike's been pretty fired up about uh, Twitter. I got another story for him this week. Um, he'll like. Uh, I don't think the V8 will leave the Tundra because they require Mike's to actually make something new. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to happen. There is an interesting conversation about the Lexus 5.0 liter V8. Uh, that's an interesting question. And the Toyota Land Cruiser folks are pretty much given they, they they they're like given that the uh land cruiser will not have a v8 that's what they that they personally think they won't have a v8 
I personally think if Toyota was going to merge with anyone, I'd say, I'd, I'd say rather GM or Nissan, one of the bigger, better built in my eyebrows brands. Whew. I need to drink some more to read that one. <laughs> Dance master. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think the Toyota with General Motors doesn't make sense to me. I don't know. Uh, Toyota and Nissan would be hard because they're both Japanese brands. And so you need to find somebody who's strong in Europe, who's weak in the United States, or vice versa. One guy who does good in cars, one guy who does good in trucks. And you kind of vice versa that, I think, is, is what the what it would be. Any news on a 2020 F-150 or the 7.3 liter for Super Duty? Uh, the news on a 2020 F-150, it'll be a 2021 model. It's coming out next year. Um, I don't know timing of that. It used to be in January, Detroit Auto Show, but Detroit Auto Show won't be happening this year until um, the spring. Uh, the 7.3 liter V8, it's going to be this fall. We'll know more details. Uh, that is what I'm hearing back from uh, Ford. Uh, sorry. Oh, there we go. I can go up to it. I, these, the, the, the chat comments were getting out of sorts. So the 7.3 for the Super Duty, the, the story I'm hearing from Ford is it's going to come out fall of this year, the new Super Duty. So that means July, August, we should know something about that 7.3 liter. I really love the range of video, but my favorite part is you going off-road with your kids. You can see your great father. Oh, thanks. Uh, the kids um, really get mad at me when I don't take them off-road. <laughs> and I had some people like comment like, oh, you used your kids for props, and that was just terrible. And I'm like, you know what? Screw you guys. I just deleted their comments. I was like, oh, my, I wasn't using the kids for props. We were just having a good time. We were having a good, It's a good fun truck to drive around in. Fun truck to off-road in. I feel like Jim from Ram has a lot more power of his company than Swears does. Jim from Ram's got a bigger budget. Ooh, the rain's coming, coming through. Sorry, there's uh, people stopping along the side of the road. I can't figure out why. It's starting to rain. Um, yeah, uh, Jim's got a bigger budget than Swears does. That's the story there. Uh, Toto also asked us the dealership for the feedback from the market. And Toto wants to know a lot, but they don't... Uh, Always working it. Michael Levine went on Twitter storm last week about F one fifty. Did you see it? I did see it. I will do a story on that. I was uh, I was busy last week with some stuff, but I did see it. I will have a story out because that's big news for Ford and Bravo for them. Uh, Trout Killer Pro, what are your thoughts on a three point liter Duramax? Have you driven one yet? What have you heard about it? I drive one next month. Trout Killer Pro. My wife and I are going to Bend, Oregon, with a Chevy event. We will be driving the new 3.0 liter Duramax, and we'll be driving the new Heavy Duties. So it's kind of a cool combo event. Um, I will have more for you then. I have heard the, the the details I've heard from TFL has had a few things on them. Uh, fascinating truck is that uh, it's about on par with the with the brand of the industry. So it's gonna be like the Ram Eco Diesel. And so in my view, and I get chastised for this, but my view is that small displacement. Duramax engine is a fuel economy truck, not a towing monster. Yes, you can still tow with it. Yes, it has diesel. I get that. But to me, it's more about fuel economy than it is towing prowess because you still have, at the end of the day, it's still a half ton truck. And I think that the tow ratings, if you look at like the, the F-150 EcoBoost with the uh, power stroke diesel versus the EcoBoost engine, you'll find the EcoBoost has a higher towing capacity, max towing capacity. And so it's really not about towing in those in those those um, light duty diesels. I think it's fuel economy. And so you really gotta do the math on whether the price works out for you. Uh, do you think the V8 will leave the F-150 in the next redesign? No. No, people are making a lot of news about that uh, V8 getting a shift cut in um, Canada, was it? And uh, the you know, but if you look, at, I, I think that just that's the reality of Ford's focus right now. So if you look at their lineup, the uh, Expedition. I'm not sure. So the Navigator, and not the Expedition. I don't know the the big uh, the three row SUV. You guys will help me out with this. Um, is that those have EcoBoost engines now? You have the F-150 with EcoBoost engines now. You have the Ranger with EcoBoost engines now. So they're moving all of their stuff to EcoBoost engine, but I think that 5 liter still sticks around. I think they're still going to use it. Um, because truck fans, truck guys, even I, if I do a poor video on this channel, you see it all the time. Guys don't like the EcoBoost. It's it's those the fear of the turbos burning out, which they eventually will, and the price replacement. That really gets people. And I don't think, I think Ford's smart enough to, not to kill it. 
Uh, what do you expect to happen now that Ford invests in Rivian? Nothing. I, I, sorry, Isaac. I, I'm going to get excited. I'm going to get excited for you guys and Rivian guys. Um, it's a very expensive pickup. I think Ford's just going to you know, take the battery tech and the platform and throw the rest of Rivian to the curb. It's It's been Ford's history. They've done it with Land, Cruise, Land Rover. They've done it with uh, uh, another brand that lost for words but they they've done it in the past they take the best technology they use they integrate in their system and then they toss them out so um i don't expect that ford's not ford's not going to help them um bring the truck to market they may give them some tips and they may help them with the manufacturing but that's all rivian that piece of it ford specifically invested in that skateboard design they really like that 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 platform that uh, rivian designed and so they're going to learn all again about that platform and then they're going to you know take that away Nissan's already part of the Renault. Yeah, Northern Northern Toyota. They are part of the Renault. The conversation is they could lose out completely. They could be cast a curb. Nissan and Renault are very much at odds right now on whether the partnership still exists. And the new agreement that FCA put forward was there was one seat for Nissan and the new board of directors. It's kind of a slap in the face. And so I would say in the coming days and weeks, we could see where Nissan may pull out of the alliance. Which would be huge. It'd be just another blow. Like a, the, Nissan's just getting hit, like left and right. It's going crazy right now. The news cycle is just bad for Nissan. It's been bad for about a year. I have some really, really great friends over there that work in the PR team, and we have had a lot of fun over the years. And I feel bad for them because they are just under siege with bad news. Uh, Timmy, you're right. The GMC carbon fiber red is expensive, but they put a lot of features in the package, low the price. You called it out. That was my guess. I, I figured they were going to do that. So you. So that way you and I don't know the true cost. However, however, oh, in about a couple months, probably sometime this September, October, I'm going to get a hold of a GM dealer and I'm going to get the parts price for the carbon fiber bed. If I get the parts price, then we will really know what the price of that carbon bed, carbon bed is. Um, but it's the parts price that we need to know. Interesting play by GM to put the 6.2 in the custom trail boss. Why is it not... Just hop, hold on. Interesting play by GM to put the 6.2 in its custom trail boss. Why is it not in the LT trail boss, though? That's more the luxury trail boss. I don't know what GM's doing. They're putting that 6.2 in everything. I love the 6.2. 6.2 in the 10 speed, it is a monster. And, and it's awesome. And the fuel economy is not bad either. And so if I had the money, I'd buy a custom trail boss 6.2 and I'd put a lift on it and we'll have some fun. Um, I think GM is just at this point. They are just throwing everything they can because they can't afford to redesign the interior. And they, what I think is interesting is, you guys are pretty in tune with this stuff. Um, if you look at the new Camaro uh, SS, and I bring this up because GM Authority is a site I follow religiously, and I get a lot of information from. So if you if you look at GM Authority, I've talked about this several times over there, is that the Camaro SS they actually did an emergency redesign of the front end because the front end looked just like the Silverado. And so they did this emergency redesign of the silver rot, the front end because it, it looked terrible. And so what I was thinking was they need to do an emergency redesign on the Silverado if they're going to do that from the Camaro standpoint. Because that Silverado, from what I understand, especially for the 2500, 3500 and the Chevy Silverados, is customers aren't buying them and pre-ordering them like they were used to. And so I, I'm pretty curious to see what the future holds on that. Um, I, to me, it's about the interior, and the interior is going to take a lot more work. So, uh, what are we at now? 19 was the new Silverado. I'm going to say 2021. I'm going to say an emergency redesign of the interior because they are getting their butts kicked. I don't care how you splice and dice those numbers. They got their ass kicked by Ram in that first quarter. That's the fact. Statistics don't lie. They get their ass kicked, and they're going to get ass kicked anymore. And if you don't think number two in the truck world – means anything then you're on the wrong channel bud because that means a lot to people and consumers want to be number two they want to be number one i mean ford makes a big deal about that and people ford ford guys they love that and so you got to be in the race for that toyota tundra it's funny and nissan titan as well and honda ridgeline they're fine trucks there's nothing wrong with those trucks it's that the sales volume gets people to go on well that's not a good truck they only sold eight thousand units they only sold two thousand units so whatever that's not a good truck at all. That's that's the mentality of that customer. And so if you're not fighting for market share, you're seen as a loser. 
And that's what the market is for full-size trucks and the truck market in North America. Uh, does Toyota listen to dealer feedback, though? Uh, I think Toyota listens to a lot of feedback. But I don't know how much they actually listen to the feedback. Um, I, I, you know, Toyota's issue has always been North America versus Japan. Nissan, same deal. Nissan North America versus Japan. And until they can get those sides to work, you know, it doesn't really work out well. But the flip side of that, think about this. You have Toyota that maybe is not com as competitive as they could be in the half-ton market in the United States. One segment market throughout the world. And Toyota's doing well globally. But then you get companies like Ford and General Motors and FCA that really listen to customers, really have great truck products, and then they suck worldwide. So I, I don't know what you want. I mean, to, to me, Toyota fighting Japan is always a good thing for Toyota because that means sales are going well. If Toyota Japan was letting North America do whatever the hell they wanted all the time, it maybe cause some concern. I don't know. It, it seems weird to me. If you think about, if you go back and think about that, in the sense that, you know, Toyota does well globally, Nissan does well globally, um, and so they have. You know, Japan is a very different culture. I was there in January. It's very different. It's, I don't know how else to explain it. And um, what makes sense here doesn't make sense over there at all. They don't understand trucks at all. They never tow anything over there. It just they don't see it. And so I've always believed that you are a um, a product of your environment and the Japanese environment says small car small car small car small car that's what that island has and so that's where they focus on but you know they're one of the world's largest automakers so it's hard to criticize them you know you could say yeah the Tundra sucks in sales in the United States they're one of the world's largest automakers you know so I mean what do you want from them do you want to be like General Motors and FCA and even Ford that are dying for a bailout when the economy crashes? You want to be like Toyota that sent their employees in San Antonio to go uh, rake the parks and pick up leaves and clean out the forests and do the stuff they're doing with those guys down there. I like the new 2020 2500 3500 GMC Sierra. It looks good. It's interesting. I, I have friends at GMC and there's I haven't heard anything about from them as far as the first press drive for the heavy duties. For the GMC Sierras, but I hear through the grapevine things are changing over there because of budget cuts, and that the Chevy Silverado trip may be the only driving impression we get of that. I don't know. Um, the budget's have been cut big time. Uh, the, there's a new Ram EcoDiesel drive out this summer, and I was talking to my Ram rep about it. He said they only had like 45 slots available. They typically have over a couple hundred, and so budgets are getting cut everywhere, and the market is capped. And so, to me, perfect storm for consolidation. Merger, merger, merger. <coughs> Wrong dude. There we go. <coughs> Don't you hate that? All right. Sorry. <clears throat> Come on, come on, boys, come back, come back. Here we go. All right. <clears throat> yeah, my wife and I are going to a Chevy event. <clears throat> it's going to be awesome. <clears throat> come on. All right, kind of shocking on the merger, to be honest, considering GM, and from what I hear, have had for years. So, you know, who knows who's going to get to be next? Who's going to merge with other make? Yeah. Boy, my voice is like. Come on back, folks. We're going to be back for, uh, get a, I'm going to be uh, live at five with the weather and going next on traffic. Whew. Don't you hate long tubes? I hate wrong tubes. All right. Agree the 3.0 diesels in these half tons are for cafe requirements. Ruby and Tech would be good in F-150. I, yeah, I agree with that. The Ridgeline is not a truck. I heard that. Uh, the 2018-2019 Ford F-150 5.0 liter has a burning oil problem. Hope they fix it for the all new 2021 Ford F-150. You know, I hear about these oil problems. Let me tell you on the suite a little bit and tell you about oil problems. I, he goes through two quarts every 100 miles. What do you think of the 2020 Silverado 1500 update? Seemed like a lot of updates for such a new truck. Kind of attempt to catch up. You said it, buddy. Chevy's going, and they're going, we need to throw all this stuff at it. And they're doing everything they can to put, in that, put into that truck. 
but it's not a problem of it's not a thing of updates it's not a thing of changes adaptive cruise control i had a friend on twitter a uh, fellow auto writer said he said you know here's the thing about the adaptive cruise control now being part of the 2020 silverado the thing is that's great and all but how in the hell wasn't that part of the 2019 model you know it's like it, it's a great point like like why would you not even think about being competitive with that stupid little feature that you just added to it? Uh, it's just that quick. I think they, I think Chevy was shocked. They were shocked at the response they got from the Silverado, and they were shocked. They thought they're going to win Truck of the Year for Nac Toy, North American Car Truck of the Year. They thought Motor Trend was going to win Truck of the Year. They thought Truck Trend was Truck of the Year. They thought they're going to win lots of awards and going to be fantastic. They were flat out shocked by the response. And I think they just, they did a poor job. Leadership did a poor job on that one. Uh, GM should offer the 6.2 and the LT2. That's the most popular trim. I offer it all the way around. Why even not offer it? It's a great powertrain. If the customers want to spend money on it, let's spend money on it. Tim, if I was you, I'd do a 6-inch BDS lift with 37 MT and 37-inch tires for your new truck. Well, there's a thing here about Juan about that is uh, I got to do the, uh, uh, the step rails because I short. Uh, the Ridgeline is not a truck. All right, I'm not going to start the Ridgeline truck. Take it easy. I know. Well, yeah, yeah, I know. I had a problem with that. Wrong tube. Um, 2019 Ram was really bad news for GM. Ram must be the best truck brand right now. They're kicking ass. Uh, but number one, yeah, yeah. I think Toyota is the largest by sales, VW by volume. Yeah, Chris. It just depends how you break it up. Who's number one? I I quit caring about that a while ago. Um. Well, I said Ford and Chevy on cutting production of a lot of their lineups. Sorry, new phone. Trying to figure out and vice versa. Oh, okay. Um, surprised that GMC HD isn't getting a drive event. Seems like they really need to be pushing that truck, especially with a Silverado appearance criticism. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was. I, so I haven't heard anything, but that doesn't mean anything. I mean, it could be in July. I mean, these trips are about these are a couple weeks out. Then they get invited and the airfare, I think, figured out. So... I'm not surprised I haven't heard anything, but I kind of am surprised. And I'm hearing the same people are going to do Chevy PR trucks. They're going to do GMC PR trucks. Because that uh, that cut they took, that white collar layoff they took back in uh, December, that hit PR as well. Um, I'm going to the uh, Ram what or FCA What's New event in end of June as well. I'm going to see my dad and brother for a couple days up in Michigan. And I'll be driving all new Ram products and have new Ram news up there too. So, uh, Sidebar, 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 sidebar. That's uh, that kind of thing. Um, Biff Malibu. Hey, Biff, how you doing? Sorry, I had to keep drinking. I had a wrong tube situation earlier. All right. And, uh, having a... Sp- Wait, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get to the comment. Having a small single vehicle garage, I'm considering a newer Colorado or Canyon. Oh, cool. What's your opinion on those? Oh, I, um, so let me think about this a little bit, um, before I sound off, like, seat of my pants. I, I like the new Colorado and Canyon. Um, I like the, the seating. I like the design. Um, I'm not a big fan of the way the the rear door kind of whooshes up towards the top. I'm not a big fan of that. Um, I think the interior room is fine. Uh, I've driven them, I've driven many different vehicle versions of that. Huge fan of the ZR2 Bison. Huge fan. I think it's awesome. There's a I have a video on this channel that I was in Texas climbing up these ledges with it. Damn thing's amazing. Um, I would say this. If you are going to daily drive it and not rock crawl and stuff, I would probably go Canyon for the more comfortable interior. I wouldn't go Denali Canyon. I'm not a big fan of that interior. I think it's just kind of a waste. Uh, Colorado Z, Z71 is kind of a waste in my opinion as well. It's there's not much there. Um, I would go with your stock Colorado, or I'd go Canyon uh, for more luxury, depending on your price point. The um, you can't get a manual anymore in those Colorado and Canyon. They killed that this year, but the automatic's fine and the base engine's fine. I had a work work truck Colorado in Illinois. I was driving around two years ago. I think it was now two three years ago now. Well, and I like the work truck version too. Uh, I like the fact that there's no I like the fact there's a regular cab. I like that it's rear seat delete because for my needs, I don't need another seat. I just need room for my crap behind the the, the seats. 
I like that aspect of it. I like the features of it. Um, I do think that it's a little bit behind as far as interior tech. I had a, the ZR2 well, a couple months ago. It's all blended together. I think it was actually last fall. And it was kind of interesting to me how behind in technology they were versus, say, the new Ranger. And um, and, and I, I want to say technology like it's adaptive cruise control. Maybe that was the thing I was doing them with them as well. Uh, yeah, I... I I would say you're a good, good place for those. I had an S10 back in the day. I like Chevy and General Motors products. Um, there's a little bit of concern over the interior quality and overall quality. I think the powertrain is fine. I think the interiors are, are maybe not a, their strong point, but it's it's the midsize truck segment. There's not anybody that's really strong in mids and in interiors in midsize truck segment, in my opinion. Uh, definitely. I hope that answers your question. I have uh, videos of the Colorado on this channel. I don't know if I have any videos of Canyon on this channel. I've uh, driven them several times, and I drove the Denali, but I don't believe I have videos on this channel of those because I've been doing this for eight years now, but I've only been doing video for like two years now. I think it's two. And so um, I, I, you know, I may not have caught up to the video. I may not have videos on this channel of that product. Uh, Jeff Fukushima, excuse me, but GM, at least make an option again. Northern Toyota, thanks for the reply. Good info, I didn't know. Hey, that's why I'm here. Ask me questions. Other proposed midsize trucks from Renault, from the FCA Renault announcement, which would you want to see? Well, I think we're going to see a Ram midsize one metric ton truck. We're going to see a one metric ton truck from, from Ram. They've talked about doing that. They're looking at that. They're going to do that. I think the question is going to be, is that Renault Alaskan going to be now based on the new Ram midsize metric one ton, or is it going to stay on the Navarro platform? If I'm Nissan, I'm insulted by the proposal that FCA put forward to Renault, and I'm backing away, which means that the Renault Alaskan will no longer be based on the Nissan Navarro platform. That's what I think is going to happen. I think that's going to happen, but it, here's the deal. That's a metric one ton, which is I showed the quote in the in the video. I even zoomed in on the quote he said, because people got a, uh, there was a ton of news stories about the new Ram Dakota is coming back. It's gonna come back. It's awesome. Yeah. And it was a bunch of dumbass journalists saying that they didn't figure out his quote. Metric one ton is a global truck. It's not a United States truck. It's what it is. That is what it is, folks. And so I think you're gonna see a Ram global truck. I think the Fiat fullback goes away and that Ram builds it and Fiat copies it and Renault copies it. I think that's what you're going to find. Now, I'd love to see it in the United States, but it won't ever happen. I, I should say it won't ever happen. I don't foresee Ram building a mid-sized truck in the United States. I don't foresee that. I think they're going to lean on the Jeep Gladiator as being their entry in that segment. I think they're going to leave it the hell alone because they don't have the resources right now to put it towards to do something with it. Now, if Renault, Renault comes to United States, which they should come to the United States, I hope they don't screw it up like VW has screwed up for years. I hope they bring their truck with them. The VW Amarok not being in the United States is just stupid. VW knows it. Their board members have said it. The dealers know it. It's just dumb to not offer a, a mid-sized truck and in the United States is dumb. Ram can say, hey, we offer one. It's called the Jeep Gladiator. But VW can't say that at all because they don't have anything. So if Renault comes over, I could see Renault bringing over a mid-sized version of the Ram Global one-ton truck with different suspension because that suspension is built for more payload and towing. Because you got to remember, in global truck world, they don't have a full-size truck. And so they're not going to tow with, they're towing the midsize, they're towing the full size weight with the midsize truck is what I'm trying to say. <sighs> Good Lord, I need more to drink. Um, so I think you're going to find that's going to happen. That's going to be the case is that if Renault comes over, they better damn well bring their SUVs. They better damn well bring their pickup truck too. And that Renault Alaskan, freaking we own Alaska. It's part of a, the United States. Makes sense name wise. But I think it's going to be based on the RAM platform. I think. That would make me excited. I love trucks. Bring more trucks over. <laughs> I'm 
cool with that. If you guys ever get me enough subs, I'm going to go ahead and buy all the damn trucks in the marketplace. I'm just going to have a fleet of them outside my door. Um, I'm out. Later, Dance Master. Sorry, I, I was long answer there. I hope that answered your questions, Chris. And yeah, Brandon, but do they have rear seat AC vents? I mean, that's the big question. The half ton diesel engine option from all manufacturers is not worth the money, just my opinion. Hey, oil. It's uh, it's very oil. The gun's smooth. I love that name. Um, I should send you my guns. My guns need lots of help. I have a new gun case, by the way. I'm looking at it right now. It's my closet. I got it from the farm. Um, it's not to secure my weapons because they're always unloaded in the house. It's that I can keep all my shit together, like my ammo and my guns together. That's why I needed the case. That was a big thing. Um, but yeah, I need to keep them locked up from the kids too. Um, I think if you look at the half ton diesel on paper, it makes no sense, which is why manufacturers like Toyota haven't done it because it makes no sense on paper, but people love them. People love diesels. I uh, love my ridge line. 90% of the truck use the ridge line sells. Enjoy your domestic truck repairs. John, John, I, I the thing I surprised me with the ridge line is, and I tell people this, is that I went driving the ridge line on these county roads out here, and we have washboards. If you've ever seen washboards, it's crazy. Um, so I, I drove the ridge line rush over washboards, and that suspension and that ridge line did much better than, I'm going to say, 80% of the midsize trucks in the marketplace. Yeah. I think it did fantastic. So I have a lot of love for the Ridgeline. Um, I think the front end used a little help. Not a big fan of the speaker system. I'm not a big fan of how they rolled it out. But I do have a story that went to live a couple years ago on the Ridgeline frame. And uh, that shocked a lot of people. That It's a unibody with a frame. Yes, it is. Uh, Canyon Denali is not worth it. Colorado LT 3.6 V6 is a good option, yeah. Hey, so definitely like the SLE SLT Canyon for the luxury feel and prefer the overall look too. Yeah, yeah, I, Canyon SL too. Yeah, exactly. Don't. I'm not sold in Denali. SLE SLT. Get the options you want either way, and get the price you want. Carlos interior is not the best, but still best in class. Interiors and midsize trucks are the, not the same ballparks. Half tons. I agree. Hey, Johnny Five, Johnny Five. I can see Ram building a mid-sized truck sometime in the future. The mid-sized market is still growing quite a bit. Yeah, I want to know about the Jeep Gladiator sales. I can't wait for Jeep Gladiator sales because I think that's going to really determine where people are going to be excited for. If the mid-sized truck market grows enough to absorb those sales, I think you're going to see more trucks. Um, but why? But would VW bring the MROC with the TDI and light of diesel issues? They'd bring it over be a gas version. And they'd have to, the thing is that people don't understand is they have to build it in Chattanooga. We have that de that stupid chicken tax still. You cannot import a truck in the United States without slapping on a big tariff on top of it. So you have to build in the United States. VW has the capacity in Chattanooga, um, or they'd have to add more capacity in the line, whatever, and they have to make it gas. VW is not doing diesel in the United States. They're not dummies. No mid sized trucks have rear seat vents. <laughs> Okay, enough of the ridge line. The light went out and came back on. Thank God. Oh, light in here. Sorry, I got I got three lights on. Four. I got four lights on. I'm doing the best I can. Canyon SLT was soft touch dash. Ooh. Yeah, it. Um. Uh, yeah. On top of that, I I felt that too. I, it's interesting. I'm not sure I've ever felt my dash like that before but you do touch it in the canyon you do you're like oh look at that and then you're like wait why am i touching this dash i don't know uh domestic truck makers need the half tons in the line for fuel economy reasons since they don't build them small cars anymore yeah uh oh it went out here okay um the uh hope you're staying safe yourself juan we get storms rolling in it's uh thunderstruck all right um uh, I made the point that the FCA is they FCA just bought two billion dollars worth of EPA credits, and that's why they shouldn't do the merger with Renault is to not spend the money EPA credits. So yeah, it's, uh, EPA it's a big deal. If you're paying a fine for every truck you sell, it's kind of a shitty deal. No oh, ambulance. Sorry, I live on a, oh fire truck. I live on a really um, I live. In a cul-de-sac in Nebraska. I know. Wait a minute. Cul-de-sac, Nebraska. And uh, I can see a really busy road out my window. And the road connects gearing with the Scotts Bluff. And so it, they use it a lot. And I'm always like, whoa, 
fire truck. <laughs> um, yeah, it's like squirrel. All right, I get that way. The, oh, Johnny says the wife and I test drove a sequoia today. You know, I I was actually in a sequoia. I've been in several lately. Uh, Toyota's really using them, and and when we go to events, they're bringing sequoias for these events, which makes sense. You want to haul a lot of people, but uh, it's interesting. It's it. The dash is so 2007 from Tundra, but they're putting them out there a lot more. I'm waiting. So I was talking to Toyota about this at in Texas. We did uh, Sequoia TRD Pro, we did Tundra new TRD Pro, and was Tacoma TRD Pro new with a seat? That I got a lot of hate over that. I'm fat, fine. Put the comments, I know. Um, but anyways, I'm like, I was actually in Toyota. I was like, where's our event? I need to email. I need to email that guy. I want to go, we got to have the event of Sequoia. I want to go off-roading with Sequoia. TRD Pro, off-roading. Come on, guys. I'm excited for that. Things I get excited about. I want to go camping with it. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, uh, let's see. Could you see manufacturers going back to stands if oil prices rise in the future? You mean gas prices. Uh, it's not cons- It's not manufacturers, it's consumers. I don't think so. And I, I have a very controversial take on this. I don't think consumers really care anymore. I think fuel co- fuel prices have grown and decro- and gone back and forth so many times that I think consumers are just want the capability and they don't care about prices anymore. We're never going to get down to a dime a gallon again. That's not going to happen. And uh, I, I think consumers are fine with that. Uh, the fuel economy has improved so much that I think consumers are really happy with it. So like, I was talking to my, my uncle the other day about this, and uh, he's an old car and truck guy. And if you look at it, we used to have trucks that got 12, 14 miles a gallon. I got one. Outsized by 62 Chevy C10. <laughs> Man, the thing gets like 12 miles a gallon downwind in neutral. That's what it gets. And so when you have these new trucks that get 25 miles per gallon, 20 miles a gallon, that's really good. People like that. They, they're not – I don't think that they're willing to sacrifice the capability – for fuel economy anymore and besides california and their stupid cardboard messing around with the gas prices and all stuff going on uh, most of the country has been pretty average in gas prices for a long time and i think as fuel economy has improved in trucks and full size suvs i just don't think customers that interested anymore in sacrificing for the fuel economy and i think that the average income for most consumers has gone up as well Regardless what the millennials will have you believe, we're making good money these days and spending another $10, $20 per month for fuel really isn't that big of a deal. All right. They really don't need the half-ton diesels to be good. They just need to be in lineup. There's no busy roads in Nebraska. There are busy roads. Glad you like my name. And yes, I keep my guns clean and oiled. as just as you should do. It's the right thing to do. Yeah, I need to get on that. Uh, it's reliable, extremely comfortable. Oh, the uh, Sequoia. Yeah. It, this, but it's, the Dash is so 2007 Tundra. I know you know this. Cafe is getting too far out there. That's why we end up with what we get from the manufacturers. There's a lot of discussion about Cafe. Some people are really pissed about it as well. I don't know. They're not going to have a Sequoia off-road even though because it's not a capable off-road. You stop now. I want to go I want to go camping with it. When are you going to, to go on the media drive for 2020 Super Super Duty? Well... Juan Super Duty. He's talking about Super Duty. Uh, that will be. It's gonna be in the fall, and it depends on you guys. I need more subscribers. Ford is always hit or miss with me on trucks, and so they do really weird events too. So we'll see how that works out. I just want to drive it. I just want to get it, haul horses with it, kind of stuff. Uh, it's only money. Hashtag only money. Oh, uh, hey, Last Star Foster. How you doing, buddy? Uh, would you like to get a four cylinder diesel in a full size truck? Hmm. GM could have put the 2.8 Duramax in half ton instead of 2.7 gas and 3.0 Duramax would have saved a lot of R&D. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, the question is, do four cylinders sell in full size trucks? People lead me to believe that 2.7 liter EcoBoost in four cylinder sells in the F-150. No. No, 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 no. I don't believe it. Uh, I, yeah, I just don't, I'm, I'm with Brandon here. I don't think the engine is just powerful enough. I don't think, I don't think you're going to get away with that. I think you have to go a little bit bigger for full size, for a half ton truck. 
Uh, and I bet the 2020 Super Duty will be at State Fair, Texas. Ooh, Chris is insightful tonight. And yeah, I would take that bet. Yep. And uh, State Fair, Texas is basically a must event for me. Just show up at the Ford Drive event, Tim. I basically did that with the uh, tar or the power truck diesel. <laughs> they had it in Denver, and I wasn't invited. I was like, what the hell? So I drove down. Uh, trucks and SUVs are what's popular right now. I wouldn't buy a car unless it was a two-door sporty car as a second car. Yeah, I, I agree, Biff. I, I, you know, Sorry, I get really dark all of a sudden. This weather is one weird right now. Um, I guess it is 6 o'clock. No, it's 5.30 my time. Sorry, doing a tornado watch right now. Uh, it's that kind of weather. Um, I, I agree. People are always like, you don't need a truck. I'm like, I use a truck every day. That, is that a 6 cylinder with 2.7 liter EcoBoost? That's ridiculous. Oh, the, the Chevy's a 2.7 4 cylinder, isn't it? I was confused. Um, I use a truck every day. Regardless of what I'm doing... I always need a truck for whatever reason. I just do. I, I just There's always something I need a truck for. The dump, Home Depot, whatever. And I enjoy driving a truck. I love sitting in a truck and driving a truck. It's nothing I like prefer more. And so I own a truck. And I drive trucks. And so it's what I do. And so it's like... I don't understand the people that are like, I just want a small car. I want a, a small car. I'm like, well, you don't like cars at all. Um... I agree it's quite as outdated, but it's reliable. It's trade, state of art, equals untested problems. Eh, yeah. I hate to distract you. Oh, I'm sorry. I, you can distract me all you want. Topic. What is your opinion on the upcoming 2020 model year Honda CRV? Ooh. I haven't heard anything new on a 2020 CRV. Um, I thought it was the same CRV. Um, yeah, actually, my wife's looked at that as well. My wife owns a 1998 CRV. We're doing a new one. And so. And the thunder rolls. Um, I've looked at it. It's very typical Honda. It's very reliable. It's more comfortable. It's, it's, it's a very blase design. I will say it's got more comfortable interior. It's still a boring drive. That's what Hondas are. And so I, that's kind of my opinion on it. It's nothing interesting about it. My wife is going to end up probably with a Mazda CX-5. If you've never looked at Mazdas, you should. The CX-5 is incredible. It's a fun to drive, uh, sporty, lots of great interior. That's good value. Uh, Twin Duramax is slow in the Colorado Canyon, but 369 foot-pounds of torque would much slower in a full-size truck. Yeah, uh, I would say uh, fasted. I the video I did with the the Colorado, uh, the no the uh, ZR2 Bison in Colorado, excuse me, with the diesel was very clear. It's great off-road, low speeds, high speeds. You do want the gasoline engine. You're spot on. I'm glad my name made you laugh. <laughs> well, you just Super Duty asked a question about Super Duty. It's kind of funny. Uh, I don't think 2.8 Duramax would even get good mile per gallon in Silverado. Uh, Jim Tudor. Toyota is investing $400 million in Texas Tundra plant. What do you think it means via this model? Oh, I wrote a story on that, Jim. You probably saw my story. Um, it got 900 shares or something on Facebook. It was kind of crazy. Uh, I, I think that they're going to move the Sequoia from Indiana to Texas and the Highlander is going to increase production in Indiana to, to offset the lost Sequoia. I think that's what's going to happen. I think that the, they need capacity for Highlander sales and they need to increase, increase capacity there. And so I believe that Sequoia is going to go to Texas, which makes sense. The Sequoia is built on the same line that the Tundra is built on. They're the same truck. So I think it's going to happen. Wow, is it getting nasty out there? And Thunderstruck. Uh, 2.8 permanent GMT 700. Uh, yeah, code name there. I'm not getting code names. On a CRV has an oil burning I'm telling you, nothing has an oil burning problem like my Swede. What do you think of the Tundra 5.7? It's a beast. I owned one. I loved it. Uh, good throaty, slow acceleration, but that's okay. Um, I love the TRD performance on it, the package with the exhaust. It's phenomenal. I've driven all over the country. I've driven it from here to Michigan and gotten good fuel economy. That's why I say EcoBoost does great towing, but fuel economy is not great at the end of the day because I drove the Tundra and I, got, and I know what the fuel economy is going to be. So I, have, I love it. I, I love the engine. We say all Hondas and Toyotas are getting safe, reliable vehicles, but they tend to be outdated and boring. I'd agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
All right, guys. Um, I'm going to go watch the weather a little bit because we're in tornado season. And uh, I don't want to be swept away up here. So I'm going to be safe and uh, sign off for you guys. You do a RAM 3 to 500. I'm trying one. I need uh, 1,500 more subscribers. Or actually, I'll, I'll be at that. Um, yeah, I have a basement. I'm going to maybe grab the wife, go downstairs in the basement. Um, I'm going to that RAM event in the end of June. I'll do a 3500 while I'm there at that RAM event. And there is one on this channel. There, if you look for search my channel, uh, I have a 3500 new one, and I drove that at the event in Las Vegas. Why do you think Honda originally went unibody? Because it's Honda. They built out the pilot platform. They didn't want to invest very much money into it. They don't have high expectations for the Honda Ridgeline. I mean, they don't have much money to spend on that. Do you follow on Twitter? Uh, yeah, no, I follow my phone. Where are my phones at? We have weather alerts. We have other radio. Uh, Twitter is not a big thing in my area. Nebraska, right? Not a big thing. All right, I'm going to go and be safe. And uh, thanks, guys. Thanks for being here. And thanks for subscribing. Thanks for being part of the channel, man. The channel's doing awesome. I'm so happy for the results. And it's so much fun to watch. And so much guys get your guys' input. And it's been a lot of fun. So thanks, guys. I will see you guys later. I will uh, respond to questions that I can. Uh, wait around, John. Wait for maybe to this fall. Maybe changes in the canyon. No, no next model year. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right, I'm out of here, guys. Good night. See you later. Be safe. Later.